Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We're back once again with another amazing science tutorial video. I'm Coach Spivey, joined my son Jordan Spivey. And if you haven't already, go ahead and like and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss out on more of our amazing videos. And also check out our website at www.fathersoninnovations.com for even more content and materials. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get to our video for today, which is Mechanisms of Evolution 101. So let's do this. So before we start on the mechanism of evolution, it's important to understand what evolution is. And it's the process by which modern organisms have descended from ancient organisms. So basically you're looking at change over time. And we'll use the horse as an example. So if we go all the way back to 60 million years ago, we have the hierocotherium. And if you notice, it had a foretold hoof well spread for walking on soft ground. So if look at this hoof right here, look at these toes, they're spread out. And then if we go to 40 million years ago with the mesohippus, if you notice, the toe hoof is for moving faster over dry ground. And if you look, these toes have actually come in closer together. And then if we go to 30 million years ago, here, here's the merikippus. And if you notice, the middle toe developed into a hoof to run faster. So this middle toe right here has become larger and thicker so the horse can actually run faster and if you look at these outside toes they moved in even closer but then we can go to 10 million years ago with the plicopus so if you notice the other toes are lost as only one middle hoof is used so if you notice there's only this one middle hoof used in order for the horse to run faster and then if we go to 1 million years ago with the equus if you notice there's a single hoof and it runs quickly over hard ground now, if you notice, over time, the horse's hoof has changed or evolved in response to the environment around it. So at first it started off with soft ground, and then we went to dry ground, and then look at the hoof as it changed in order for the horse to run faster. And now we're on hard ground, and look at this single hoof right here. And if you also notice, the head size of the horse actually got larger as well in response to the environment. So basically all evolution is, is organisms evolving or changing in order to better to survive in a certain environment. Now let's take a look at the four mechanisms of evolution. These are microevolution that refers to the changes in allele frequencies within a single population. So we have natural selection, genetic drift, mutations, and gene flow and all four of these are mechanisms of evolution and we'll first start off with natural selection natural selection is simply the process by which organisms that are most suited to their environment survive and reproduce most successfully and this is also known as survival of the fittest so let's take a look at this first picture right here if you notice the leaves on this tree are sitting at a much higher point so if you notice this giraffe right here is taller and it has a longer neck, so it can, it can eat the leaves on the street. But if you notice this giraffe right here and this giraffe right here, both of these giraffes are shorter, so they're not going to be able to reach those leaves on that tree. And if you notice in this next part, this giraffe right here is taller, so it can reach the leaves on the tree, and so is this giraffe as well, so it can reach the leaves on this tree and be able to eat as well. But if you notice, this giraffe right here was shorter and it wasn't able to eat the leaves on the tree, so it was not naturally selected for. So in the giraffe population, having a longer neck was naturally selected for because you were more likely to get the food that you need in order to be able to survive and reproduce. A shorter neck is not gonna allow you to survive and reproduce, so truly survival of the fittest. And so a longer neck is much more fit than a short neck in the giraffe population. Now let's look at our next diagram. And if you notice, these birds right here are actually eating these green beetles. And if you notice, they're not eating these brown beetles right here because these brown beetles are actually able to blend in or camouflage with this background. And if you notice, in the next generation, there are more and more brown beetles in this next generation. The reason why is because it's easier for these birds to spot and eat these green beetles. So if we continue these generations on and on, there will continue to be more and more brown beetles and fewer and fewer green beetles. And another thing I like to tell my students with natural selection is actually, if you think about it, if you start out as a ninth grade, everyone that you was in ninth grade with doesn't make it to the 10th grade year. 
and everyone from your 10th grade year doesn't make it to the 11th grade year. And everyone from your 11th grade year doesn't make it to your senior year. So by the time you get to your senior year, it is truly survival of the fittest. And that's another example I like to use for natural selection in an everyday scenario. Let's take a look at natural selection in pepper and moss population before the Industrial Revolution and then after the Industrial Revolution. So if you notice, the bark on the trees was lighter. So the lighter colored pepper moss were able to blend in better. But you notice darker colored pepper moss, it was easier for to see them. But then let's look at the Industrial Revolution and it made the bark on the trees darker and it made it easier for the predators to come in and spot and eat the lighter colored pepper moss. So the darker colored pepper moss were actually naturally selected for to survive and reproduce because they was actually able to blend in better than the lighter colored pepper moss. Now let's look at genetic drift. And this is a random change in allele frequency caused by a series of chance occurrences that cause an allele to become more or less common in a population. And you have two types of genetic drift. We first have the bottleneck effect, and then we have the founder effect. So let's look at the bottleneck effect. And it's a change in allele frequency following a dramatic reduction in the size of a population. So if you notice, with this bottleneck effect, so we're actually gonna literally look at a bottleneck and see what occurs. So look at all of these alleles right here inside this bottle. We have a lot of yellows and a lot of blues. But after this traumatic or after this event right here or this random event, if you notice there are more blue alleles in this bottle than there are yellow alleles. So this is the bottleneck effect because you notice it left out a lot of the yellow alleles and it took in a lot of the blue alleles. So the percentage of blue alleles is higher in this surviving individual population right here. And you notice out of these surviving individuals, when they go to reproduce, if you notice in this bottle right here, there are many more blue alleles in this population as a result of the bottleneck effect. And you notice this next generation population does not represent this former generation population accurately because many of the alleles from this population were lost. So when we went over, more blues are in this generation or in this population, which resulted in more blues being in this next generation right here. And then if we take a look at the founder effect, this is a change in allele frequencies as a result of the migration of a small subgroup of a population. So say if we have, we're looking at this population of butterflies, and for whatever reason, this population of butterflies, we have a small group that says, you know what? hey, there's not enough food over here or there's not enough resources over here. So let's go ahead and move to this area. Now, if you notice, there were no other butterflies in this area. So the reason why they call it founder effect because they have literally found a new place to live and survive and reproduce. So this small group right here does not represent this whole group because you notice this whole group also had white butterflies, but white butterflies are not present in this small group that have migrated to a new area. Let's do a genetic drift recap. So we have the founder effect and we have the bottleneck effect. And you've noticed in the original population of both, there are more alleles than the original population or there is more biodiversity in this original population right here. And if you notice in both types of effects, there is a critical event that occurs or happens. So in the founder effect, if you look, this small population of organisms, they say, hey, you know what? Let's go ahead and move and let's go find us a new area. So it might not be enough food. It might be that there are predators that have moved into the previous area. But for whatever reason, this small group moves away and says, hey, let's go ahead and move away and set up shop in a new area. So the reason why they call it the founders effect again is because they moved to a new area that was not inhabited by any other organisms. And so now they've created a new population. Now if you notice in this new population, there is less biodiversity and there's less biodiversity in a founder effect population, this new population, and also in a bottleneck population as well. So now let's move over here to the bio, to the bottleneck effect. So if you look, look at all of these alleles right here in this original population. But if you look at this bottleneck effect, here's that critical event again. And if you notice, the allele frequency has went down significantly. So we had the purple, the greens, the yellows, and the oranges in here. But if you notice, many of them that left out was actually the greens and the whites or the grays. So these are the ones that are left. But if you notice, the purples and the yellows 
and the light purples, they actually got left out. And there's less biodiversity on this end. So two things they have in common, more biodiversity in the original population, less biodiversity in the new population. We're now looking at our next mechanism of evolution, which is mutations. And these are changes in the genetic material of a cell, which leads to new alleles in a population. And there are three basic mutations. There's substitutions, insertions, and deletions. And what these do is they actually change the genotype or the DNA sequencing in a population which ultimately changes the phenotype or the physical appearance of organisms in a population as well. Now let's take a look at our last mechanism of evolution, which is gene flow. And this is the movement of alleles from one population to another. So if you notice, we have our purple beetles over here on the left, and we have our brown beetles on the right. And one of our purple beetles actually migrates into the brown beetle's population. So this purple beetle has literally, literally brought its alleles from this population to the brown beetle population over here. And if it reproduces with one of these brown beetles, that means it'll be sharing its alleles or actually putting its alleles inside of this population of brown beetles, which is going to cause changes in this population's genotype and phenotype or physical appearance over time. Same thing as if one of these brown beetles was actually to migrate into this purple beetle population. So when we look at gene flow, we're actually looking at new or we're looking at organisms bringing their genes or alleles into another population of organisms, which causes change or evolutionary change over time. Now it's time for your check for understanding. And you're going to use your video notes and knowledge of mechanisms of evolution to answer the following questions. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope this tutorial was helpful and beneficial to you. I'm once again, I'm Coach Spivey, sign off my son Jordan Spivey. And if you haven't already, go ahead and like and subscribe to our channel. And also check us out at our website at www.fathersoninnovations.com. And once again, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you have a wonderful, awesome, positive day. Peace.